Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Tennis Manager 2021 playthrough. We are in the late stages of the 2023 season, headed into the indoor hardcourt season. Uh, both of our players are ranked in the top 70 in the world. They're both in top form with beaming morale and in excellent shape. So the season has been relatively successful so far. That being said, Maxime Cressy, our top player who has been with us since the Old School Sports Tennis Academy was founded almost three years ago, may be nearing the end of his time with us. Uh, he's ranked 47th in the world, but his goal this season was to get into the top 35. So we are going to have to make some significant strides over these last couple months of the season to achieve that goal. Uh, you can see we've also only achieved one of his three supplemental goals outside of his overall ranking. The Grand Slam season is done. Uh, we did make it to the round of 32 in the U.S. Open, which just completed, but his goal this year was to get to the round of 16. So with the Grand Slam season over, we won't be achieving that goal. And then another goal of his has been to uh, reach the round of 16 at a Masters 1000 level event. Uh, do have a couple more attempts at that, hopefully in the final months of the season. So uh, if we do well in a Masters 1000 level event, um, get to the round of 16, that will certainly help us get our ranking up perhaps towards the top 35 in the world. Um, if we're able to um, achieve both of those goals, then Maxime will probably stay with us. Otherwise, he may unfortunately be looking for a, a different coach next season, which would um, definitely not be great for our academy. But if, uh, if that's what happens, then we'll look for a good replacement this offseason. Our other player, Stefan Kozlov, a very different situation. Um, as you saw, he's in the mid-60s in the world right now. His goal this season was only to get into the top 100, so we've absolutely achieved that goal. Uh, we've achieved his national ranking goal. He's uh, achieved his goal in a Masters 250 or 500 level event. His goal was to win a match at a Grand Slam, which he's done. Uh, the only goal that he hasn't achieved is getting into a Masters 1000 level event. Um, he's gotten to second round qualifying, but honestly, with his ranking, um, you know, in the, the top 70 in the world now, there's a good chance of him uh, achieving this goal, um, certainly, um, potentially over the next couple of months in the last few Masters 1000 level events of the season. And uh, even if we don't achieve this goal, um, you can see we've got an 88% success measure at this point. So um, he's definitely not going to fall out of the top 100. So pretty certain that Stefan will be back with us next year, which is great news. But looking at the first week of the season, Stefan is at the Carry Open and Maxine is at the Sevilla Open. Uh, we'll be reporting in on how the season is going, but that is an overview of how things look as uh, we start the last couple months of the 2023 tennis season here at Old School Sports. Well, it was a very different start to the season for our two players. Uh, Maxime Cressy, who was the number one seed at the 90-level Sevilla Open, uh, got a buy into the round of 32 and then lost the first match that he actually played. So that's very disappointing. Uh, but Stefan Kozlov won the title at the 80-level carry Open. So a uh, great start to the uh, indoor season for Stefan Kozlov. You can see that moved him up into the top 60 in the world. Uh, before we know it, he he might actually be ranked ahead of Maxime. It's been a uh, crazy uh, rush through the rankings over the last uh, closing in on two seasons for Stefan Kozlov as he has made a big splash in the uh, men's tennis scene on the international level. Well, we've talked about how Maxime Cressy will need to have a real strong finish to the year to get into the top 35 and likely remain working with us here at the Old School Sports Tennis Academy. And he's had a real good run. You can see he is the number one seed in the San Francisco Open, and he's made it to the finals against Sem Ilkel. Uh, but this is a 100-level event, so Maxime has never won at this level yet. He's won at the 80-level many times in the 90-level once. But uh, he is a big favorite going into this match, and uh, if he can get a 100-level win uh, on his record, uh, that'll definitely definitely help uh, boost his ranking. So um, would be a, a great victory for uh, Maxime against the Turk if uh, we are able to uh, get a victory here.
Maxime is up an early break here in the first set. Just went up another break. So an overwhelming 6-2 win in the first set for Maxime Cressy. He's now one set away from his uh, first 100 level victory on the tennis tour. We just got broke though here in the second set, but we broke back and then allowed and then allowed ourselves to be broken again. So uh, heading into a decisive uh, third set against Ilkel. We'll see what Maxime can do. Just push a bit more and you'll take the advantage, Maxime. And we just got an early break here in the third set, followed by another break and a 6-2-3-6-6-1 victory. So Maxime is a winner at the 100 level for the first time on the Pro Tour at the San Francisco Open of 2023. Well, after never lit, never winning a 100-level uh, men's tour event in his career, uh, Maxime is the number one seed, has made it to the finals in the Fairfield Open, another 100-level event. So uh, after winning his first 100-level event just a couple weeks ago, uh, got a chance to make it two in a row here against Rudolf Malaker in the finals at Fairfield. Uh, you see, we've never played the German earlier, uh, never played the German before in our lives. Uh, Maxime, certainly by virtue of the rankings in his seed, is going to be uh, favored going into this match, but we'll see how it goes against Molliker. Maxime's already down an early break, down two early breaks in the first set. So an overwhelming first set by Moliker. Maxime loses it 6-2. Going to uh, really need to, as they say, raise this level of play on the key points. That is without a doubt. You've got everything you need to bounce back, Maxime. Let's see you do it. And we are now up a break in this uh, third set, but or second set, but... Moliker broke back. It looks like we could be headed towards a tiebreaker, but no, Maxime breaks him. 7-5 winner in the uh, second set, so now we are headed to the final set. Maxime is feeling confident. No stress, you're in the game. Let go of your balls a little more, Maxime. And we are down a break early in this third set. Very unfortunate. Very uh, weird match for Maxime. He loses 2-6, uh, 7-5, 2-6 to Moliker in the finals of the Fairfield Open. Well, though, although we may not end up achieving Maxime's goal to get into the top 35 by the end of this season, he is definitely not going down without a fight. Uh, Number one seed you can see here at the 125 level Ningbo Open in China, and we have made it to another final. Uh, we're going to be uh, on the home turf of Zhizhen Zhang, but we are ranked 44th in the world while Zhang is ranked 186. So although the crowd will be against us, uh, we have won our previous match against Zhang, and uh, we've never wanted a 125 level before, so this would be a uh, very big victory for Maxime if we are able to uh, pull off the win in the final here. Heading into the match, we are there. We're on serve in the early stages of this first set. Maxime just got a break, however. 6-3 win in the first set. So Maxime, one set away from another tournament victory in this 2023 season. And we're up an early break here, up two early breaks now in this second set. Maxime with an overwhelming 6-3, 6-1 victory in the finals of the 125 level Ningbo Open. So uh, Maxime has won at the 100 level and the 125 level for the first time ever over the last month or so. So it's been a uh, very productive uh, indoor hardcourt season this fall for Maxime Cressy. 
just a few few weeks left though um, we've got a master's event in Paris coming up which will be uh, critical for Maxime if he's able to win a couple matches there um, which is a tough task uh, but if he can win a couple matches in Paris um, it's not impossible that he could still finish this year in the top 35 Well, both Maxime and Stefan are back at the academy training this week. Um, the bad news is that uh, they both lost in the second round of qualifying for the Rolex Paris Masters. So um, for Stefan, uh, a little disappointing. For Maxime, it's, it's kind of crushing, though. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of running out of time to uh, score a big tournament uh run and, and get his ranking up into the top 35 in the world so um you know the um the paris masters was a, a big opportunity for us it's unfortunate that he won't be playing in that event because uh it's going to be hard now to uh generate the points that he needs over these last couple weeks of the season to uh move into the top 35 which means that uh our relationship with Maxime after three seasons is unfortunately likely ending, uh, but that will give us an opportunity to recruit somebody else to uh, join Stefan on the team for the uh, upcoming 2024 season. Well, another appearance in the finals for Maxime in this fall 2023 season. You can see we're at the 110 level Bratislava Open in Slovakia, and he's facing the number five seed, John Isner. So uh, Maxime has lost the only time he played Isner uh, while under our coaching. Uh, he's enthusiastic heading into the match. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get a victory here. I think, as I've mentioned, it's going to be a a little too little too late um, you know it's great that we're having this success in these uh, 100 125 and now hopefully 110 tournaments as we uh, close out this 2023 season but uh, we really needed to do better in uh, 500 or masters level 1000 type events and uh, that hasn't happened so far uh, we did win the first set 7-6 in a tiebreaker so um Maxime is stressed. Hopefully he can uh, close things out here in the second set and avoid going to a decisive third set against Isner. And we are up an early break on Isner here in the second set, and then we wiped him out. So a 7-6, 6-1 victory for Maxime in the Bratislava Open. So he has won at the 100, 110, and 125 levels for the first time in his career over the last two months in this uh, fall 2023 season so Maxime is thrilled uh, so are we he's uh closing out his likely run with us in style that's for sure well we're headed into the last week of action for Maxime Cressy this fall uh, he's going to be at the 125 Houston Open in the U.S. Um, you can see he's ranked 42nd in the world in top form excellent shape Stefan is going to be back training at the academy. Um, even if he wins this event, I don't think Maxime will get into the top 35 in the world, unfortunately. But it's a uh, it's been a really good run with him. Um, three tournament victories at uh, levels that he had never won at before over the last couple of week or the last couple of months. So if there was a little nuance in how um, the programmers of Tennis Manager looked at things, there there might be a chance that Maxime would stay with us. Um, but I think uh, he's just going to look and see. I didn't get into the top 35, so he will uh, likely be, be leaving us. But uh, we'll see how this potential last week playing with him goes. And it didn't go too well as Maxime uh, lost in his first uh, first match at the Houston Open Tournament. So uh, an unfortunate end to the season for Maxime. He's going to be off training at the Academy next week, and uh, we will be checking in shortly uh, to review how this season went. Well, in one piece of good news, um, we've reached level solid as a manager here towards the end of our third season, so uh, we are continuing to progress. Hopefully that will uh, help us attract uh, better and better players and do a better, better and job with them in the future. Well, as if things couldn't get worse, uh, Maxime was in a uh, car accident yesterday evening. Uh, fortunately, he's not hurt, but he's in a state of shock and very tired. So uh, 
We'll have to be paying attention to his physical and mental state. Who knows what that will do as far as his uh, willingness to re-up with the Academy for uh, another season after we didn't quite get into the top 35 this year. And uh, moving on, looking at the last week of training of the season, uh, Maxime progressed very well. And uh, Stefan Kozlov moved up a notch in his serve power to 11. Uh, we've been focused on that since he joined the academy. And uh, you can see he's also close to, very close to moving up a level in his uh, return ability, which is positive. Uh, end of season objective review. Um, we've kept our players so far, although that could change. We have a balance over zero with 163,000. Uh, we respected what we needed to with our staff salaries, uh, but we did not uh, reach level two for the medical center, so they'll be upset with us about that, but that was a secondary goal. So overall, they're delighted with our work and they're going to invest uh, more money into the academy than, than they did this season. So positive news there. And now the rubber will uh, meet the road in our end of season review with uh, both Stefan and Maxime. Uh, Stefan, as we've talked about, absolutely reached his uh, goal of being 100th in the world. He made it to the second round of a Grand Slam event. Uh, he's satisfied with our collaboration. Uh, the only goal that we had for Stefan that we didn't achieve was getting into a Masters 1000 level event. Uh, but I think that we should do that. Uh, we should be able to definitely do that next year. So. Uh, I will keep Stefan on, Stefan on board. Uh, we're not going to do anything to change his contract right now. He certainly may request uh, different terms and conditions going forward, though. And now uh, looking at Maxime. Uh, we got to 42nd in the world, but he wanted to get to 35th. We got to the round of 32 in both Grand Slam and Masters Level 1000 events. He wanted to get to the round 16 in both, so we were just... Uh, just a few spots in the rankings away from his uh, main goal and just one win in a Grand Slam or one win in a Masters 1000 level event away from one of his secondary goals. Uh, we did reach the quarterfinals of a Masters 250 level event, uh, which was good, but he is uh, deeply dissatisfied with our collaboration. Uh, he's going to terminate his contract with us. So. Uh, it's been a nice run with Maxime over the past three years. Uh, we've gone from, uh, I believe, around 160th in the world to 42nd in the world. Uh, but uh, we will be looking for a replacement for Maxime for our uh, second spot at the Academy next season. As you can see, uh, they are surprised that I'm no longer coaching a player. We'll have to do some recruiting this off season and decide whether I will uh, be coaching Stefan next season or um, whoever we recruit that's new. Uh, you look at the indoor season for Stefan, he moved up one notch in the rankings to 67th in the world, and uh, his record was uh, nine and five in six tournaments. Um, so he did get uh, one win at the 80 level early in the uh, early in the uh, fall season here, but pretty much achieved most of our goals. So uh, looking forward to uh, working closely with Stefan next season. Uh, we will be back in our next episode when we go over the off season, which is going to include recruiting a new player to join the academy to replace Maxime. And then it's also going to include uh, recruiting uh, new, at least one new staff member because our... Uh, Scout Kimmer Van Dam has announced that he's going to be uh, retiring at the end of this season, so we will be uh, needing to hire a new scout to uh, join the team for next season. But until the off-season review, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you have a great day, and if you are enjoying the series, I uh, would appreciate it if you like these episodes and uh, subscribe so you never miss one. Have a great day.